we're going to talk about stopping motion using your strobes. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Slide Lands, we're here in Central Park. We're going to talk about how to stop action using your strobes. We've got Michelle Lim here. She's our fabulous dancer who just graduated from Juilliard. Yep. And we've got Susie Knowles here, who is a makeup artist at the Met, and she's done all of our makeup for us here today. And Tony Williams. And Tony Williams, who is here to help us all out, to get us all done. And of course, my lovely wife, Julian, on the side. <laughs> so let's get started and see what we can do. Let's do it. In order to stop and freeze action, there's two things you can use. You can use your shutter speed and you can use a flash duration. Really, the amount of time that it takes for a strobe to come to its peak power and then tail off, it kind of looks like a shark's fin. It has a really quick peak and then it tails off kind of slowly. So what we want to do is shorten that flash duration so that it gives a quick flash, freezes our action, and gives a, a clear, crisp image. On the Bajas, they've got a T mode, and what this is, is a short flash duration mode. So this technology is called the IGBT technology. So whatever strobe you have, if you have IGB technology, you have the same technology that Baja has. The ability to cut the tail off from the shark's fin and make the flash duration shorter and shorter. The quicker you cut it off, the more power you lose. So the compromise you're making is, if I cut it off quick, I'm gonna have less power because I've cut my burn in half, so I get half the exposure. So you want to find a point where you can get it as short as possible, but give you enough exposure to be able to expose your subject to make it look right. Now in our first setup, we're going to use just the flash duration because I want to burn the ambient of the room into the shot, which is going to mean that the person is going to blur just a little bit after the flash goes off. So it gives us kind of a mix of frozen action with a little bit of blur. That can look really nice in some situations. It is a great way to use those two principles together. In our second setup, we'll go to a shorter shutter speed and our flash duration, very short at T2. Now we're freezing the action using both of those to be able to stop our action. The problem we face here is that in the exposure triangle, I've got a crisp look at her face at 1 of a second at 5.6, but I've got ambient lights in this room and I want to see them. I don't want it to just be black in the background. So I'm gonna start dragging the shutter to a 15th of a second, which means on her arms and things, they're going to blur. If I want to get rid of that, I just simply get rid of the ambient, go back to a 60th of a second or 250th of a second, and it's going to make everything crisp, but the background's going to go black. So I'm choosing to allow her arms and things to blur just a little bit. Towards the end, I turn the light towards the background to give us a little bit of light on the background, and I shorten the uh, shutter speed to a 30th of a second, and those looked a little better. She wasn't blurring quite as much. The last jumps, we didn't have a lot of ambient involved. We had a little more just strobe light and that froze her action just a little better. The last thing in the exposure triangle is the ISO. I push that ISO up to 640 in order to make the shutter speed not to be too long uh, for the ambient in the room. I could have gone to 1250, but I just, I really don't like to go that far. So I stayed at 640 and that gave us a nice look, kind of froze her action, let there be a little bit of uh, blur on her hands and things and had a fabulous blur in the fabric, looked great. So there you have it, I learned a lot tonight. You know, every real life situation has its own challenges. Tonight's challenge was, Freezing her action and letting the ambient kind of a show itself, which meant I've got to push the ISO up higher than I wanted to, but it gave me the ambient that I wanted. I have to live with a little bit of blur in her hands, but it gives me a nice sharp uh, face because of my strobe on her face. I think we got a great shot here tonight and a great team to put it together for us. So thanks to everyone and keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. <laughs> One, two, three, and... <sighs> I lack total flexibility. <laughs> I have nothing flexible about my body. So there you have it. So subscribe to the Slanted Lens. Keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking. I love shooting in New York City because a police officer sat right out there and he had his lights flashing the entire time we were shooting at the very beginning and didn't get out of his car and come over and tell us to leave. I love New York. LA, we would have been kicked out by now. <laughs>